Catholic Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, February the 1st, 2019. Today in 1814, the island of Luzon in the Philippines was shaken with a VEI, that's Volcanic Explosivity Index, of four. The eruption hurled ash that settled 30 feet deep around the mountain and killed some 1,200 people. It was so bad that when another smaller eruption of another smaller volcano, the entire region experienced a volcanic winter so bad the ash blocked out so much of the sun that 1816 was known as the year without a summer. Despite all the hype, volcanoes have a dramatically larger effect on global climate than does carbon dioxide or ozone, which is a fact that's usually left out of discussions about giving lots and lots and lots and lots of money to the same people making the dire predictions about the future. Today was the first of a hugely successful series of non-violent protests for African Americans in Greensboro, North Carolina. Four young black men, Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Ezell Blair Jr., and David Richmond, all students at nearby North Carolina Ag and Tech, walked into the white part of the diner downstairs at the Woolworth Department Store and sat down at the bar and they asked to be served, and when they were directed to the colored section, they simply refused to stand up. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon, February the 1st, 1961. The young men sat down and things played out as expected, and they sat at the counter until the store closed, and then they left without incident. The next day, the four men returned with 20 or so other young black students, and they did the same thing. On the fourth day, 300 young black students were crowded into the Woolworth's lunch counter at 132 South Elm Street. And within a week, Woolworth stores all over the Carolinas and Kentucky were crowded with non-violent protesters asking for a simple cup of coffee at the whites only counter. On July 25th, after facing huge financial losses, Greensboro store manager Clarence Harris asked three of his black employees to change out of their work clothes and go over to the white counter and order a meal. They were, quietly, the first to be served at a Woolworth lunch counter. Some locations were more calcitrant, but by 1965, Woolworth was entirely desegregated at the cost of only a few localized fights in Jackson, Mississippi, and four young men who said they were inspired by the example of Dr. Martin Luther King's nonviolent protests. Physicists will know all too well that February the 1st, 1976, the world lost German physicist and theoretician Werner Heisenberg. Born in 1901 in Würzburg, Heisenberg was a pioneer of quantum mechanics. And for those few listeners who don't dabble in nuclear physics, matter is made of atoms, and atoms are made of electrons which orbit a nucleus which has one or more bosons. The most famous of those is the proton. But the proton and electron are not where the story ends. It turns out there's a whole ecosystem of particles of all sorts that make up the inside of the atom or that exist all on their own. The study of how atoms stick together is called nuclear physics. The study of how those atoms interact with each other is called chemistry. The study of the little doodads themselves is called particle physics. And the study of how they interact with one another is called quantum physics. Heisenberg's greatest accomplishment is the uncertainty principle in quantum physics, which states simply that you can know where an electron is or you can know how fast it's going, but you can't know both of those things at the same time. And while that seems unremarkable, when you start dealing with chalkboards full of Greek letters, it makes a really, really big difference. Sadly, most modern non-scientists only know about Heisenberg from Star Trek Technobabble, in which the transporter beam uses a Heisenberg compensator to reassemble Kirk or Picard. Breaking Bad fans will recognize the name, but there's no real physics to speak of there, so we'll just move along. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.